the part where I just cross my fingers and hope for the best. Um, while we're waiting for that to happen, guys, welcome. It's 2019. I hope you're set for a huge year. Um, I'm really excited for what's coming your way. Um, we're working really hard. Um, of course, um, for those of you uh, keen beans, um, you'll know that celebration's not far away. So we're in full celebration mode um, as we speak. And um, looks like we are going live. So I can shut this window down. That's perfect. Okay. Um, good day to everyone who's made it on time. I can see Kay. I can see Maxine. Well done. Um, thank you so much, guys. I know you guys are really um, regular listeners. So I hope this is always valuable. All right. Now, I just need some help. If you can just give me a thumbs up. I'm just going to share my screen so we can get started. Share. Here we go. Okay. Can you see that? Can you give me a thumbs up? You can see my slides and see my face again. Hopefully you can see. Uh, here we go. Awesome. Thanks, Maxine. I saw you raise your hand. Brilliant. All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we are going to kick off in true Monday night product talk style. Um, so I just wanted to start by saying hello and welcome officially <laughs> now that our tech's all sorted. Um, for those of you guys who are tuning in for the first time, um, my name is Danny Catania. I'm, I'm an experienced dietitian, um, a nutritionist. I've spent years building and managing my own private practice clinics, um, and I've also worked at the highest level uh, in elite sport. Um, I'm the product education specialist for Isogenex ANZ, um, and it is my absolute privilege and honor um, to teach and train on our products every day. It's what I live and breathe for. Um, I'm passionate about what great nutrition can do for a person's health um, and performance. And I guess, in my opinion, I think really Isogenex really nails it when it comes to, you know, nutrition solutions that actually work, um, that actually deliver, that are easy, convenient and affordable so that anyone and everyone can achieve, you know, whatever it is that, you know, um, that they want to see um, happen with their health. Um, for those of you, again, who are brand new, I know because we've got some longtime listeners and I love you guys. Shout out to everyone who tunes in each week, um, particularly Maureen and Steve. You guys um, are always, um, you always show up and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, we host this webinar on the first Monday night of every month. Um, that's really to give everyone an opportunity to learn about our incredible products, no matter where you are in Australia, New Zealand, or even around the world, because I know that we have some very passionate people who tune in from North America and Canada. So shout out to you guys. I know you'll probably be watching this um, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> um, so um, thank you as always for tuning in. Now, remember that these, the structure for these webinars is we start off with an education piece um, and then we followed by some Q&A. And tonight's Q&A, because the topic is all around cleansing, tonight's Q&A really focuses on, um, on cleansing and cleanse days. Um, so if you would like to have your question answered in future webinars um, or in posts or articles, I really, um, that's, this is my um, way to keep my ears to the ground. So make sure you send them through to us at productquestionsanz at isogenicscorp.com. Um, and I'll put that, um, that email up at the end. So anyway, without further ado, um, let's get started. All right, so like I said, tonight's topic is all about cleansing and the science behind intermittent fasting. We're we'll talking about how to cleanse if it's new to you, and we'll touch on some of the science that has brought intermittent fasting into mainstream. But before I start, you know, for those of you guys who tune in every month, you'll know um, that we need to start with disclaimers. So I just like to remind everyone that the information um, provided on this webinar is designed to help you make informed decisions about your health. It's not intended to substitute advice from your GP or your chosen health professional, um, and the statements appearing on this webinar have not been evaluated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, or TGA. Um, our isogenics products are not intended to cure, uh, treat, diagnose, or prevent any disease. So with all that being said, uh, let's get started. So um, now, what I wanted to draw your attention to, I've been covering this um, for the last couple of months. I just really want to make sure that everyone knows where previous videos are because I work really hard on developing the content and really making sure that these are not just good for you know the, the one the, the one night in the month, but are really great um, shareable tools. Um, and I get quite a few um, questions and messages on how to find previous um, episodes or previous videos. So um, just all you need to do is head on over for now, just head on over to the Isogenics 
um, face, ANZ Facebook, the corporate page. Um, click on videos, you'll see that come up um, as one of the options, usually on the left hand side. Um, and just click on videos and you'll see, you'll be able to find them. They're all labeled product talk webinar and then the, the topic. Um, so hopefully that's useful. But um, for now, this is where you'll find them. All right, we are working on somewhere more permanent to house them this year. All right, so. Now, um, it is my first day back at the desk. Um, I had a beautiful two weeks off with my family. Um, I didn't do much. I just spent some time with my little girl. Um, but as you do, I worked so hard towards the lead up of, um, of last year that I ended up being uh, with a little um, sinus infection. So if you hear, hear me a little bit kind of sniffly, that's why I'm just on the tail end of it. So anyway, let's kick off. What is a nice cleanse day? Um, an Isogenix Cleanse Day is a type of nutritionally supported intermittent fast, and it's really designed to help you feel nourished and energized um, while also supporting your health and your weight management goals. Um, if you're new to cleanse days, you might be surprised at how easy it is to get started. Um, remember that cleanse days aren't complicated, but for most people, they're different to their usual um, daily routine, right? Um, the overall goal is significant is to significantly limit your calories for a period of up to two consecutive days per week um, to a total of four, um, four days per month. Um, and while nourishing your body, um, obviously with cleanse for life and other um, cleanse day snack options. So that's really important. Um, you know, cleanse days are really about letting your body sort of rest and recharge. Um, they're really, and the, you know, remember that there's no um, laxatives or diuretics. So it's all about nourishing your body and really helping your body to, um, to get the most out of that kind of that rest from um, knife and fork meals. Um, all right. So let's go through, I just really wanted to go through the basics and then I'm going to kick, I'm going to um, get into the science for those of you guys who are really um, interested in this. So let's take a look at our sample um, cleanse day schedule, okay? So on a cleanse day, now this is just an example, right? And I put in a couple of other things there just because some people, you know, it's, it's nice to have some options, right? Um, and there's no really right or wrong way to cleanse. Um, I know there's a couple of different um, protocols out there, um, but just know that as long as you're following sort of like the, the basic ground rules, if you like, you'll be fine. All right. So on a cleanse day, remember, we want to drink four deep cleansing servings. So that's two scoops if you're using powder or it's 120 mils if you're drinking the liquid of Cleanse for Life. And it's spaced evenly throughout the morning, noon, late afternoon and evening. Um, and then you can also choose from cleanse day support tools um, or small snacks to help you manage cravings and provide steady energy um, while keeping your calories as low as possible. Okay. Um, and as you can see from the schedule on your screen, there's a few, way to in, there's a few ways to include um, some of these um, support tools and really support and nourish your body and your appetite over a cleanse day. So some of these cleanse day, these, these cleanse day tools might be, um, you know, four to six isotonic snacks. Uh, might be an extra serving um, of Ionic Supreme. And, you know, we talked about, I don't know if some of you guys might have been on the call that we did with the beautiful Amy Bushell, um, who was one of our Isobody finalists earlier today. Um, but, we, you know, she suggested, you know, one of the ways that she uses Ionix is she just has, she has the, you know, the morning 30, you know, 30 mils um, as usual, but then she'll use Ionix as a kind of, as one of her support tools mid-afternoon when you're feeling maybe a little bit sort of like you hit that mid-afternoon slump. So that can be a really great way of using an addition server bionics um, you know for some of the others it's you know one it's you know one to two I still like chocolate sort of spaced out evenly throughout the day particularly save for those key times I find sometimes it's, for me it's around mid-morning and it's that evening when I can smell people cooking and I'm starting to get a bit hungry so I save those for then um, maybe for you it's e-shots I know I can't do a cleanse day without e-shots um, it might be, you know, for those who love savory, salty um, snacks, um, it might be whey thins or harvest thins. Um, for some others, it might be, you know, using a, um, a, a, a um, serve of amped hydrate. And that's particularly important if you are doing some light training on a cleanse day. Um, again, exercising, light exercise is optional on a cleanse day. Some people find it really helps them focus. Some people prefer to do absolutely nothing on a cleanse day. So for those of you guys who are tuning in live, I'd love to hear from you. What are your um, favorite 
support tools, your favorites um, cleanse day support tools. Um, so just pop them in if you're um, if you're able to chat. Obviously, if you're driving, don't worry about contributing. Um, but for those of you who have, are listening on your phones or your um, laptops, I'd love to hear from you. Um, what are your favorite support day um, tools? And what are your rules around exercise? Do you um, do you do some, do you find are you an active cleanser? Do you find that being more um, active and kind of focused and busy keeps you, you know, kind of um, have a successful cleanse day? Or are you the sort of person that prefers a more sort of pampery kind of cleanse day? So let me know. Um, and um, I'd love to, I always love to hear um, what it is for people. For me, it's about being busy. I can't be around the fridge or the pantry. I have to be completely busy and occupied. Otherwise I have a terrible cleanse day. Um, a couple of other things while those answers are coming through. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we've got weigh bins of the goa. Um, definitely we've got a, um, an active cleanser there. Has to keep really busy. Nice one. Um, and of course we can use things like herbal teas, remember, um, because, you know, it's just, um, it's just a little bit of water, flavored water. Um, so um, herbal tea is fine. And for those, some, some people, um, need you know sometimes it might be a, you know maybe it's um like an eighth of an apple sort of spread out over the day especially if there are you know um it might be your first time cleansing and you just need something uh to chew or just to kind of change the taste in your mouth but remember i just want to make a point while we're talking about all of these options remember on a cleanse day it doesn't mean that you can have all of them make sure you pick a couple you know one to three uh, max, because otherwise the whole goal is to keep those calories as low as possible. And of course, we're defeating the purpose. If you have all of them, you may as well have a shake day. So just um, on that. <laughs> awesome, guys. Loving your answers. All right. So let's have a look at when to cleanse and when to schedule cleanse days. All right. So the whole concept behind Isogenex cleanse days is that they are flexible. And this is the key thing here. They are designed to be flexible and they can be adapted to suit um, many different lifestyle goals or many different lifestyle kind of styles. Um, you can receive benefits whether you choose one or two cleanse days a week. Um, and for those of you who are new to cleanse days, it might be best to start with um, a one day cleanse, but you also have the, the option if you feel really good, um, you know, maybe you, and you think, oh, you wake up the next morning, you think, oh, that, that wasn't so bad. I'll go again. You can do it um, that, that consecutive or that deep two-day cleanse. Um, with both schedule options, you can cleanse up to a total of four um, cleanse out four days per month. Um, and of course, um, we'd love to um, have you join us on our um, ANZ Cleanse Day Wednesday, which um, is happening this Wednesday, the 9th of January. And there's nothing better than having a support team surrounding you, um, which is really you know, it's kind of, it is really nice to know that, you know, you're cleansing with a whole bunch of other people who are just as focused and dedicated to their health as you. Um, and, you know, for those of you guys who might be brand new, if you don't feel ready to complete a full cleanse day, that's okay. Um, you might choose to gradually ease into cleansing by trying a shortened or what I would call a mini cleanse. Um, so over around 12 to 16 hours, just to help you build your confidence. Um, and you can try different, you can try different patterns to find what works for you. Um, but just make sure you're following the, um, the guidelines in our system guide. All right. Um, and just while we're talking about, you know, the whole calendar, you know, when to schedule cleanse days and what's right for you, um, daily cleansing is a great option for those who choose not to or are not advised to complete a full cleanse day, um, but would still like to receive some of the nutritional benefits from you know, things like the botanical ingredients in Cleanse for Life. Um, the guideline for, cleanse, for daily cleansing is to drink one serving of Cleanse for Life first thing in the morning, um, although you can enjoy Cleanse for Life at any time of the day. Um, I like to think of it as a really like supercharged um, tea. Um, and before you ask which one's better, because this always comes up, one or two days, which one's best? Um, the answer is that there's not a single perfect way to cleanse. Um, studies show that uh, there are benefits between um, both, but basically both ways, right? So what, find whatever fits your lifestyle, um, your training goals, your family life, your personal preferences, they all count. Um, and the best cleanse day is the cleanse day that works for you. That's really bottom line. Um, some people love single cleanse days and get into the habit of doing them regularly. Um, and then there's other, um, others that really feel the benefits of doing a consecutive day cleanse. 
Um, now you can tell this is live. I'm not sure if you just heard that. I have two Huskies that sit right next to me by this window. So, um, and like they're um, kind of nutty five minutes. So if you hear that, that's what that is behind me. Um, but while we're listening to the sounds of my um, my Huskies uh, kind of play fighting, um, can you share, with, I would love to hear from you um, whether you are a single cleanse day, whether you mix it up or whether it's a double or nothing. Um, because I think there's some really interesting um, answers. I know there's a few of you listening in that are like double or nothing. It's got to be two days. I know there's quite a few people that are going to start on Cleanse Day Wednesday on um, our um, Wednesday the 9th of January and they're going to continue. Um, but that might not be the case for, for some others. So tell me, uh, let me, yeah, let me know what's your, uh, what your cleansing style is. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for your participation. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the science because I promised, and with all product talk um, uh, webinars, we always talk, get into some of the science. So let's talk a little bit about some of the science behind intermittent fasting because, of course, there's not a lot of science around. Um, you know, obviously, we've invested in our cleanse day science, but when we're looking at the, the broader term, when we're looking at independent, independent studies, we're really looking at studies behind uh, and looking at intermittent fasting. And I'm really proud of the fact here that I, at Isogenix, We've been promoting cleanse days as a tool to support overall health and weight and wellness really since the company's inception since 2002. Um, and in recent years, the science has been catching up to explain the physiological benefits of fasting protocols that have been really practiced for centuries um, in, you know, in other parts of the world as part of religious or cultural traditions. Um, and I guess as a result, the evidence that supports incorporating regular um, fasting days into your lifestyle has really exploded over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. Um, and if, obviously, I know that a lot of people start cleansing and, and are really co um, committed to cleansing for weight loss. Um, it's definitely the benefit that receives the most attention. Um, there are a lot of other reasons why you should think about not only cleansing sort of short term, but also thinking about cleansing um, and the health adaptations that come from long-term um, intermittent fasting. So let's take a look at some of these now. All right, so some of you guys may have seen this before, but I think these, um, these graphics are really important to, to go through. So one of the recent findings suggests that intermittent fasting may allow for more flexibility in calorie intake over the week, whilst keeping calorie intakes kind of on par, if you like, with a typical weight loss diet. Um, and this is often referred to in the literature as calorie cycling. Um, and one or two, into, uh, one or two, let me try and say that again. I'm too excited to speak. One or two days of intermittent fasting may create a little bit more leeway, if you like, during the rest of the week. So I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's definitely, I'm happy to sacrifice one or two days, really nourish my body um, with, you know, cleanse for life and support tools, um, and then be able to sort of, um, allow, give myself a little bit more food on those, um, those non, you know, non cleanse days or shake days. Um, so give me a yes, if that really makes sense to you. Oh, there we go. Lots of people saying, yep, that's what they, that's how they roll. <laughs> awesome guys. All right. So, um, yep. Lots of yeses, lots of hands going up. Brilliant. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some other benefits on, um, of fasting on cleanse days, all right? So let's talk a little bit about, let's talk about the elephant in the room, that's burning fat, all right? So we know that excess body fat is never a good thing, right? Um, but it's even more concerning when fat accumulates around your midsection um, and surrounds your internal organs. And this kind of deep belly fat um, is known as visceral fat, and it's been linked to serious concerns for your health and well-being. Um, if you've been living under a rock, I, I needed to tell you that. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that that's the case. Um, as part of an isogenic system, of course, um, cleanse days have been shown to promote greater weight loss and greater visceral fat loss um, than a heart healthy or also known as a whole foods diet um, in a university based, um, in, sorry, not just a, in university based scientific studies. And these results show that completing regular cleanse days can not only help with weight loss, but can also help you to lose some of that dangerous visceral fat. So a real win-win there. Um, and in recent studies, researchers have often observed that participants not only lost um, visceral fat, but also preserved lean mass. And that's really the, the, the gold ticket, if you like, or the golden ticket to making sure that your metabolism or your body stays um, healthy um, as we get older. 
Um, so basically that is really key. So we, we're preserving muscle. There's a really important factor when it comes to maintaining a healthy body weight um, in the long term. And not just body weight. I think a lot of people um, get kind of caught up with body weight. It's really important to think about, and this is what I'm thinking like, long term but as we get older it's not just the weight but it's also our physical function that really is really important and what we often see with chronic dieting is that you shave a little bit of your muscle tissue off every time a little bit you know um a little bit every, a little bit of muscle comes off every time you diet um when it's not a, you know when it's not isogenics right because we know that um from our studies we know that um, muscle tissue has been preserved very well, um, but it's very common for people to lose muscle tissue, but a little bit of muscle, a little bit of muscle. And by the time they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, um, there is not a whole lot of muscle to really help them stay, you know, really live that like a vital, healthy life. Um, and I've definitely, I, I'm definitely seeing that with my in-laws at the moment. Um, but another story. So let's talk a little bit about, um, so I hope that all made sense, but I'm really passionate about this. And I really think that, you know, with a combination of um, intermittent fasting combined with really sensible um, protein doses over the, over the day leads to a really safe, effective, long-term um, health strategy. So um, more on that later, but let's talk a little bit about um, another benefit of uh, cleanse days. And that is the effect on your appetite. So give me a yes if you have noticed that, and this is kind of the, the paradox, you think, oh, I'm going to be cleansing, so I'm definitely going to be more hungry the next day. But give me a yes if you've actually realized that you are less hungry after a cleanse. So give me a yes. Oh, there's some hands going up. Yep, <laughs> it's definitely the case. I was really surprised when I saw that too. Um, I definitely experienced that. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, I better eat up the day before and then I'm definitely going to be really hungry the, next, the following day after a cleanse and it's definitely not the case. And there are some signs to back that up. So many people who cleanse regularly have noticed that their appetites are much more manageable um, in the days following a cleanse day. And researchers have also noticed um, this um, kind of unexpected effect of intermittent fasting. They've observed changes in appetite regulating hormones. So you'll see them on your screen. Um, and this may explain the decrease in hunger that might um, follow a cleanse day. Um, in particular, in this particular study anyway, um, they saw that um, there was no change in ghrelin, which is a hunger stimulating hormone. It literally uh, the way I remember it is it's ghrelin is like the growling of your stomach. It's responsible for that or in part. Um, and they, But they also saw an increase in polypeptide YY, which is basically a fullness related hormone. Um, and while this re the, like the research is early in this field, but you know, some of this current evidence suggests that fasting might be a really great way to reset your appetite as well. So again, another win for intermittent fasting. All right. And this is um, one last thing that I really want to point to. And this really talks about not just the, you know, the short-term benefits of, of fasting, but really the long-term benefits. So when your body is managing a steady flow of nutrients from, you know, meals and snacks, um, some processes can be processes, sorry, can be put on hold. Um, one of these processes we talk about is called autophagy, or when um, Americans call it autophagy, but we, in the British um, English, we call it autophagy. Um, and um, David Despain knows I tease him about it all the time. Um, love you, David. Um, but uh, this process really works to break down the old and worn out components in um, within your cells in order to reuse those the basic building blocks, um, such as amino acids, to support cell maintenance and growth. So basically, um, think about it like um, it's a bit like, you know, cleaning out that cupboard that you never get to and kind of recycling those components. Um, and autophagy uh, it has been the subject of continuing research that points to the benefits of this fundamental, fundamental cellular cleansing process um, that really supports metabolism. It's been shown, it's been linked with um, heart and brain health and also the processes of healthy aging. Um, and basically, like I mentioned before, so autophagy goes to work whilst you're fasting on a cleanse day by basically cleaning up, thinking about it as cleaning up the worn out parts within your cells and recycling them. Um, so like I said, you know, if you're going through that sort of that cupboard in your room, if you've had some holidays and you've had some time to kind of sort out and get organized for this year, um, you might've found yourself doing this recently, um, but it's like, 
you know, you'll go through it and you'll think, oh, okay, um, this, uh, you know, you just kind of shove it, like uh, you close the door on it, um, stuff's falling out until you have time. And then when you finally have time, you open it, you sort it out and you might give some stuff away. You might recycle, you might think, oh, that doesn't go there. That goes in this cupboard. Um, or you might throw some things away because they're just, they can't be recycled. So that's basically what autophagy is in our body. Okay, so has this been interesting? Is this good? Give me a yes if you think this is interesting. This is always good to hear <coughs> that I'm on. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right. So that really concludes the education piece. Um, so let's kick on. Um, we've got a couple of uh, Q and A. Um, or a couple of questions that came through. But as always, I just need to start with another disclaimer and just make sure that we always mention that the answers to the following questions should not be considered as medical advice. Um, it's our general recommendation that people with any kind of medical condition um, speak with their doctors before starting any isogenic system, modifying their diet or changing their lifestyle. Uh, to be clear, isogenics offers meal replacements and nutritional supplements not medications. Um, no information should be, uh, sorry, used in the promotion of our products should be misinterpreted as medical advice. So hopefully that all being said, um, it's just really important that we always touch on that because we always really want to do the right thing. Um, it's not just important for um, the field to be compliant. It's really important for us to be compliant as well, because we, I love this company. We all do. And we really want it to be around forever. So let's get started. So before I jump into the questions, actually, I always get asked about ingredients in products. Um, I'm, and um, I just really want to um, show you guys that, so just so that you're not waiting a month for a response, that you can be really proactive and find the answers for yourself. Um, the best way to check for any ingredient in any product um, is to do a quick search through the products in the nutrition information PDF. Now, where do you find that? Let's start. So step one, you head over to anz.isaproduct.com. Okay, so you go there, scroll right to the bottom of the page, one, and you'll find this, uh, it's called the nutrition information sheet. Okay, once you've opened that, you go to the find button, which is the little um, magnifying glass there, or you can click control F. Okay, or you know, press on your keyboard, control F. Then it'll come up with this little um, searchy bar and then you can search in, now I've just put in some John Swart because that tends to come up, that can be some um, medication interference. Um, by the way, there's no some John Swart in any of our products at this point in time. Um, but just as a way to be able to search or if you're looking for a particular ingredient or nutrients, that's where to do it. Um, so um, that's really, hopefully that's helpful and really helps you to get your answers really quickly. All right, so let's have a look at um, some questions that have come through. So I'm gonna, there was a couple that came through last month and I'm going to um, go over them again because they have to do with cleansing and they were really good questions. So the first question came from Sandy and she asked, is it okay to have more than um, four cleanse days per month? She says, I'm thinking I would like to do two cleanse days every week new to isogenics and she's loving it um, and we love hearing that we love hearing that Sandy and um, welcome to the family um, it's really great to hear that you're having such a great experience the recommendations really in your um, isogenics 30-day weight loss guide suggest a maximum of um, six cleanse days per month right so this would mean a double cleanse or a two-day cleanse um, three out of four weeks of the month um, the research around in intermittent fasting protocols um, is really exciting and expanding um, but there still are many unknowns. Um, so we really err to the side of caution and we see many people having great results with our current suggestions. So that would be my advice. I would say, you know, three out of four um, weeks of the month, that will be fine. But just really it is good to have, um, just to mix it up a little bit so it's not all, um, always predictable for your body as well. And Jen asked this question. She said, um, I'm very interested in the whole topic of microbiomes um, and gut health at the moment. And I truly believe that isogenics ticks all the boxes um, and what is recommended for a healthy microbiome. Is there any research on isogenics and, and how it may positive, positively impact our microbiomes? Can we tell our potential customers that isogenics is great for gut health from a microbiome perspective? Um, this, is a, this was a really great question, so I thought um, it was really it was worth um, repeating the answer. Um, and definitely, Jen, this is um, something that I'm really interested in too. And there's a there's that that area of science is just exploding at the moment because we just learn more and more and more, and it's something that we've discounted before. Um, 
we haven't paid too much attention to. Um, while I can't say too much about the research that's going on right now here at Isogenics, um, I just want you to know that you should be very rest assured um, that this is very much on our radar um, and we will be able to share more in this area in the very near future. Um, as for what to advise potential customers, um, you can share that good nutrition and in particular the sources of fiber and natural sugars in the products um, it can really help to promote a healthier gut environment and provide food for, um, for gut microbes. So this is what really what prebiotic fiber does and there's plenty of it in our products. So hopefully that helps, um, but definitely um, gut health is, um, is very much on our radar. All right, and Leonie had a great question. Um, she said, she asked last uh, month, she said, can you please explain why drinking coffee on a cleanse day is a no-no? I have many associates who ask all the time. Can you also explain why Ionic Supreme works well at night um, for some to prepare for a restful night's sleep? Um, Leonie, I love hearing from you. I know you hail all the way out from Broome and um, you tune into this as often as you can, as often as your internet connection will let you. Um, remember that coffee on, uh, on cleanse days, there's actually no reason for some people not to have black coffee on a cleanse day. Um, as long as there's no milk or sugar, this might actually help some people actually get through a cleanse day um, a little easier and might help with that sort of foggy head feeling, especially if you've got someone who has been having um, like a lot of coffee, you know, in the lead up to a cleanse day. Um, so there are some people in our community who really believe in a strict caffeine free 30 days. Um, but I'll be honest and say I'm not one of them. Um, in fact, when eShots were introduced, the presence of caffeine on a cleanse day actually um, how like that we actually saw better results um, in total weight loss and in fat loss too. So there's something for you, take it or leave it. But I'm saying there's nothing really wrong with uh, a little bit of um, black coffee if that's your preference on a cleanse day. Um, now, regarding Ionic Supreme for some at night, it's all in the adaptations um, and how they work with our body's own natural circadian rhythms. Um, when you get up in the morning and your hormones are firing to get you up and moving to find your next meal, um, those adaptations really work to you know, support that energy production um, and mental function. And then at night, those same adaptogens can really support your body's sort of natural winding down processes, if you like. Um, and it's important to save the shot of ionics until you're actually in bed or very close to it. Um, I have known people to be out vacuuming um, with great enthusiasm at 11 o'clock at night uh, because they took ionics way too early in the evening and their physical endurance was definitely improved as a result. So I hope that answers that question about ionics at night. So really great question, Leonie. Now, what I thought I'd do just to finish up, um, because my promise is always around half an hour and, and we're nearly done. Um, but let's talk a little bit about three of the top questions that I always get around cleansing. So number one is, um, why are shakes an important part of the cleanse system? So number one is, um, so really, let's talk a little bit about whey protein, because whey protein is really the, the key here. So whey protein has been shown to um, support a healthy immune system by, by providing um, what I would think about as really adequate nutrients, right? And particularly the, the amino acid that comes to mind when I think about whey protein and immunity is um, cysteine, okay? And um, cysteine is really important and it's required to generate an important antioxidant called glutathione. Now, some of you might have heard of that before. Glutathione is found in all cells, um, but particularly concentrated in white blood cells. And we know that a healthy, um, or that healthy glutathione levels are really a key component of a strong immune system. Um, now, glutathione also plays a major role in the detoxification processes and reactions within the body. Um, it binds to toxins such as heavy metals, solvents, pesticides, um, and makes them more soluble. So it's easier for um, kidneys to remove them a bit more um, effectively from our body. Um, and so remember that eating sources of whey protein, which obviously includes our isolated shake, um, is one way to, to support healthy levels of um, glutathione in the body and help maximize our natural you know, detoxification systems. 
Um, and just to, as a side note for all of my, um, all of the dairy-free lovers and the, the plant-based shake uh, lovers out there, remember that the dairy-free, our dairy-free or plant-based shake um, as it's known in the UK, um, is, is also quite a good source of cysteine because the amino acid profile um, of the plant-based shake is very close to what we would naturally find in whey. And that's really thanks to our incredible food science um, department for making that happen. So just know that whey or our plant-based shakes are a really great source of cysteine. Um, and this really, I know that was a very convoluted way to say why, but I, I'm always like, don't tell me what to do. Tell me why to, why I should do it and I'll do it for, for life. Um, so this is really why we suggest um, that you have a minimum of two shake days before your first uh, cleanse day. So it's all about nourishing. All right. Um, so the next question I get is um, all the time um, is what, what time should I stop eating um, the night before a cleanse day? So hands up if you've ever had that question or maybe thought about it, you're not sure what time to finish, um, maybe just, you know, what time to time dinner and then stop eating. There's a few hands going up. Yep. Okay. So the, the simple answer is this. There's no right or wrong time to stop eating. <laughs> but let me explain a little bit more. Okay. So every time you eat, your body digests and absorbs the food that you consume um, and then transports all the nutrients to all of your cells through the bloodstream, okay? So after a meal, it takes around three hours to either use the stored, um, to use the nutrients that you just ate or store them. Um, if it's too much, like say in the case of fat, right? Usually we store quite a lot of the fat if we're, you know, and, and use most of that carbohydrate. Um, but everyone's a little bit different. Um, but the first stages of cleansing really begin at this point, which is what we would call the post-absorptive state. That's what it's known as. So during this first stage, the body uses up readily available nutrients from your most recent meal. And then it begins to draw, I guess, on the, um, the stored nutrients, right, for energy to keep blood sugar levels um, steady. And when you're cleansing, the post-absorptive state starts, it starts around three hours after your last meal. And it lasts for about 12 to 18 hours after that, after that meal. So let me just put this into perspective. So you imagine that you've eaten dinner in the evening before you plan to start your cleanse day. Um, and then you, what you'll do is you'll pass through most of this post-absorptive state um, overnight while you're sleeping. And then with that post absorb that with that sort of phase concluding around maybe that the next morning, or maybe for some, um, it may even um, finish around that sort of mid afternoon. So everyone's a little bit different. Um, but it really depends on what time you, you had dinner the night before. So it wouldn't make sense that the earlier that you had dinner on um, the evening before a cleanse day, the sooner that you would move through that post absorptive state that night and into the next day. So I hope that makes sense. There's no black and white. Um, I personally have got a bit of a rule that most nights I try and stick to it, that there's no eating um, after nine o'clock. I find it interrupts my sleep. Um, but that's a very personal thing um, and very, very dependent on my own situation. So just as an example, um, and um, I definitely find that, that, you know, that just your body does need a rest um, to, and to really uh, to, to get into that phase of rest and recovery. Oh, I've gone to the science of all of that. All right. So the very last question that we have, um, and thank you so much for your attention and your presence today, um, is broth okay on a cleanse day? I always get these, you know, whenever there's a kind of interesting, um, or you know, or kombucha is the same thing. It's, and don't get me wrong, I love kombucha. Um, but it is really normal um, to look for additional food options um, to have on a cleanse day. I get it. I'm, I'm there. Um, but the key to a successful cleanse day is to consume as few calories as possible within your personal capabilities and preferences. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's, that's the bottom line. Um, of course, our cleanse day support tools, um, which include Cleanse for Life, our snacks, we've talked about all of them, right, before, our silver lights, um, they've been formulated by, uh, with, with optimal nutrition in mind, um, but without adding too many extra calories that would compromise a cleanse day. And foods like broth, um, other things like I mentioned, like coconut water or kombucha may impede a cleanse day by delivering more calories than required on a cleanse day. And it could potentially interrupt that fasting process. So my bottom line would be, you know, avoid them on a cleanse day, keep a cleanse day, cleanse day, got your cleanse for life, choose a couple of your support tools, 
job done and then you know save some of those really favorite um really yummy foods um for um your shake days a really nice reward for getting through a cleanse so guys um that's it for me tonight thank you so much for tuning in um, I wish you all the very best for your cleanse day Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, the 9th of January, and for your cleansing journey um, there on in. Um, if you'd like any more information on cleansing or any other topic, um, make sure you head on over to anz.isafyi.com forward slash nutrition. Um, we've got, you know, I contribute to um, that the portion of that website, but we've got some really great, we've got such great team um, that really support the, all of the information that, that that comes to you um, there. So really make sure you make use of that. Um, see you next month right here on Monday, the 4th of February. Um, and until then, have a great cleanse day and uh, over and out guys, have a great night and we'll see you next month. Bye for now.